Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady and welcome to this video which is all about how to teach length to children aged 7 to 11. In this video I'm going to explain how we teach children to have a really deep sense of the size of each of the measures of length that they need to be able to work with confidently. I'm going to explain how we make sure that they know the key relationships between the different lengths. And as I do that, we're going to work on the foundations of conversion between different measures of length. There will be another video in this series where I look in depth at measure conversions across length, weight and capacity and other measures. So I'm not going to cover the full depth of measure conversion in this video. Right, let's get started by looking at what children should already know. They should already have a good understanding of comparative words for length. So wide, wider, widest, narrow, narrower, narrowest, tall, taller, tallest, short, shorter, shortest, and the comparison of long and short, and so on. They should also have explored why we need consistent units of measure. So they should, for example, have looked at measuring the length of a classroom with their feet and discovered that different people have different size feet. So therefore we have a standard measure for a foot that everyone uses, otherwise it would get confusing. So it's worth just checking that your children have achieved all that and doing a little bit of work maybe on standard units of measure if they haven't to solidify why we need standard units of measure and why we don't all just choose our own to use. Now the units of measure I'm going to look at in this video are the millimetre, the centimetre, the metre and the kilometre and how they all relate to each other, although I'm only going to be relating one measure to its next size of measure. I'm not going to focus on converting between millimetres and kilometres because at this stage it's so important that children really visualise what they're doing and if you're skipping measures that's much harder to do. And I'm also going to look at inches and feet and the link between those two measures and the link between both of those and centimetres. And we'll also look at miles and the link between miles and kilometres. So let's get started looking at millimetres and centimetres. So the key tool you're going to need for this is a ruler that measures in millimetres, centimetres and also in inches and a 12 centimetre one foot ruler is great. And of course you want to do lots of work where children have to measure in centimetres and millimetres. And it's particularly important that they learn to measure from zero. So it's actually quite useful to have rulers with a little bit at the end, so you can pay particular attention to that and squeeze out if they're measuring from the end of the ruler and not paying attention to starting at zero. So you may have some worksheets with lines on for children to measure. Here's a typical line. And this line is five centimetres and four millimetres long. So we could write the length of the line like that. Five centimetres and four millimetres. And when we work on exercises like these, children are spending time paying attention to the detail of the size of centimetres and millimetres, which is good. But we could also very reasonably ask children to write the length of that line just in millimetres because they can actually see them and count them. They can count up 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and see the extra four. So they could also write that measurement as 54 millimetres and retain a really deep understanding of what they're doing and why that answer is as it is. The slightly harder challenge is to write the measurement in the larger units. In this case, it's going to be 5.4 centimetres. And there we need to stop for a moment and check in with children that 0.4, they are four tenths of centimetres and each millimetre is one-tenth of a centimetre. Therefore, this is reasonable. That is not easy and it's really worth paying attention to. So our key aim as we work on centimetres and millimetres there is that children internalise a picture of centimetres and millimetres. And you can check that in two ways. One is to get them to indicate the size of a centimetre with their fingers. Can they do that accurately? and the size of a millimetre to get them to describe what they see when they're doing that. And the other way is for you to say lengths in centimetres or millimetres or combinations of them both, anything along these lines, 
and ask children to draw these lengths with straight edges with no measurements on. How accurate can they make them? Make it a competition, make it a challenge, make it fun. In order to do this task, children are gonna need a really clear image of this ruler in their minds and they're gonna to have to be accessing that image and using it reliably and somehow interpreting the size of centimeters and millimeters from it onto their page. So these are really very, very simple tasks, but they're incredibly powerful and incredibly important. They're how you know whether children have truly got this or not, or whether you need to do some more activities. You may find that some children have got it and some haven't, so that if you set up a measuring activity where the measuring is embedded in, in something they're really enjoying, then during that activity, you can go and spend some time with the children who are struggling and talk to them about the visual images in their heads. And then we're gonna go through exactly the same processes with centimeters and meters. So you may have a table that measures one meter, 23 centimeters, and we want to take the time to challenge children to write that just in centimeters, and also to write it just in meters, and to deeply understand that that 0.23 can mean two tenths of a meter, each of which are 10 centimeters, and three one hundredths of a meter, each of which are one centimeter, or 23 one hundredths of a meter. We covered that extensively in the video on the foundations of decimals. And here's a link to that video now, if you'd like to look at that. Children often do find this idea difficult and it is really worth leaning into. So once again, with meters, you want to show children the size of some objects and ask them to estimate the length of the object, make it a competition, express it in the three different ways. Then you want to say, lengths and get children to mark out those lengths as accurately as they can from their imagination. It would be great to give your children a deep sense of one meter by setting out meter marks and getting them to take paces that are one meter. And then as they've done that and they've internalized their own sense of a meter in terms of their own paces, take them outside and see who can get the closest to measuring 50 meters. And now, of course, we're on our way to the relationship between meters and kilometers. A kilometer is a thousand meters, and that's definitely a distance that you want to explore with the children in depth many times. If you can set a homework where children have to work out what a kilometer means to them in terms of their journey to school, ideally they're walking, so they get a really deep sense of that kilometer and maybe where the half kilometer point is with their parents, obviously you can track it with apps on phones very easily these days. And most parents have phones, so they should be able to do that and enjoy doing that with their child and giving their child a deep sense of what a kilometer is. And we're still trying to embed distances in context now. Maybe your children walk to the swimming pool together. That'd be a great distance to explore. So if that was one kilometer, 200 meters, What's that in just meters? And what is it in just kilometers and why? This is really tricky working with three decimal places. And there is a video that really leans into understanding three decimal places as well. So the point of all that is not really to work formally on conversions. It's to work on really building children's imagery of each measure and the links between the different measures so that children can estimate distances with one measure and where those distances aren't an exact number of units, they can compose them of one unit and a smaller unit and write that in different ways while they're still clearly visualizing exactly what's going on. We also want to make sure that children become familiar with an inch, the idea that that's about two and a half centimeters. So you want to build measuring in inches and needing to know what it is in centimetres into tasks. They need to know that a foot is 12 inches and that a foot is also about 30 centimetres. And that comes with loads of use of a ruler and loads of checking. Show me an inch. Show me three inches. Show me a foot. How many inches in a foot? How many millimetres in an inch? And they haven't got their rulers handy to look at, they're having to access the image of a ruler in their imagination. And every time they try to do that, that imagery gets stronger and you're able to diagnose the children who've got gaps and work to fill those gaps. 
Other great activities involve comparing lengths when they're written in slightly different ways. So you could ask a child, which is longer, two foot four inches or 25 inches? And I would always set them questions that you can actually build with the rulers so they can see the two foot four inches and they can see the 25 inches and every child can understand exactly what's going on in that question and how it's possible to get an answer to it. Two more little pieces to cover. One is miles. So the first thing you need to do is give every child the sense that a mile is longer than a kilometer. Just as we gave them a sense of a kilometer, we now need to give them a sense of a mile. And a mile is about 1.6 kilometers. So it's quite a bit further, more than one and a half kilometers. And every child should be able to describe a route that they travel that's about a kilometer and about a mile. A great task here is if you say to a child, that's a mile, how big is a kilometer? They should be able to do that. And if you say, that's a kilometer, how big's a mile? They should be able to do that and show that it's a bit more than one and a half times the size. And if they can't do that, of course, you can practice that with them until they can, and then it's deeply internalized. The final aspect of length that it's great to work on is compound measures. So that's speeds, miles per hour, meters per second, and kilometers per hour. And whenever children are working on those measures, they should be working in deep context. And you set up questions so that you tell children two of the measures. You might tell them the distance and the time and ask them to find the speed. You might tell them the distance and the speed and ask them to find the time. Or you might tell them the time and the speed and ask them to find the distance. I covered compound measures in the video on images of multiplication if you'd like to know more about that. Here's a link to that video now. So tasks for this topic. There are lots of ways to work on length across the curriculum. There are so many topics in art, craft and design. I would imagine that if you look ahead in your planning, you'll be able to find some that you can adapt perfectly to make children think precisely about some measures of length and use a ruler properly. PE is great for thinking about metres and kilometres and miles. Let's get our children active and embed estimating distances wherever you can across any part of the day or the curriculum. You might not even be in a particular subject. You might just be walking through the school and you have to wait for a moment and you could ask children to estimate the distance from where a child is standing to the opposite wall just as a time filler while you're queuing to go into assembly or something. Then, of course, there are lots of other maths topics where measuring length is going to be embedded. The next video in this series is going to be on perimeter and we'll be doing lots of measuring length there. The video after that is on measuring angles, but we'll also be doing accurate drawing of shape. So as well as accurately drawing angles, children will need to draw the lengths of the sides of the shapes that they're drawing. You can do some really challenging and important measuring of length work in the topic of symmetry and I'm going to cover that in video seven. There'll be more length measuring tasks in video nine which is on 3D shape and we'll be drawing nets of shapes so there'll be lots of length measuring there. And in video 10 which is on volume I'll also be talking about dimensions of measure and how these measures of length are one dimensional whereas measures of area are two dimensional and measures of volume are three dimensional so I'll be coming back to that as well. Children can do lots of work with length in the topic of scale drawing, of course, if they're converting a plan of the classroom in metres, maybe on a scale of one to 100, and they're drawing it one centimetre for one metre. There's powerful work in there. And they may also come across this topic when they're working on decimal calculation. Or if you want to do some decimal calculation practice, you can put that into this topic. But your key takeaways from this video that are not in any of those other videos is that you need to do precise work to make sure that each child can conceptualize each unit of length and can represent it either with their hands or with a clear description for the longer lengths. And we want to be sure that they can relate each length to the next length. So they're visualizing a picture of a ruler like this to support their thinking about the relationships between millimeters and centimeters, between centimeters and inches, between inches and feet, and between centimeters and feet and then they'll move on to a metre rule for the link between centimetres and metres, and then they'll need to use descriptions of routes for kilometres and miles. And that will need practice over time to make sure that they remember those lengths, and they will need practice to make sure that they remember, for example, that there are 12 inches in a foot, 
and that there are 100 centimetres in a metre, 10 millimetres in a centimetre and 1,000 metres in a kilometre. They should be able to visualise the 10 millimetres in a centimetre, so that should be secure, but the 1,000 metres in a kilometre they will really have to learn. And you can do that consolidation work with some suitable questions where they have to estimate lengths or where they have to write lengths in different ways. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. It's a real privilege to share this time with you. If you've any thoughts or comments or suggestions of great tasks on lengths that you love, please put them in the comments of the video. I'm currently co-creating the rest of the videos in this series in the Expert Primary Maths Teaching Facebook group and you can ask questions there if you like or you can come and join me in the live streams every Sunday morning at 9am British time and ask any questions you like. I hope you enjoy your teaching or your working with children in whichever way you work with them this week. Take care, bye for now.